Now, I know this is the moment you've all been waiting for. Today is the day I get to unveil the new Underseat Pro Roller V3. So, stay tuned. <laughs> Now make sure you stay tuned to the end because I'm going to tell you how you can win this underseat roller V3 or the V3 version of the backpack. Now that's exciting news. Now I love a good unveiling and this bag makes it even more fun to be unpacked because look at it, it comes in this beautiful cloth covering. And there's a reason for that. This bag was designed to take up a minimal amount of space so you can throw it under your bed or anything like that. So it's great for apartment dwellers, but it's really great for everyone. And when I get into the bag, you'll see why. Now let's open the bag and see what this bag looks like. Now this is the V3 version of the bag, which kept the best of the V2 and added some features that I really just love. So let me tell you a little bit about the construction of this bag. This bag is made out of RPET, which is made out of recycled plastic, which makes it water resistant. The zippers are YKK number 10 reverse coil, which makes them also water resistant and very, very durable. Now, some of the things that are immediately seen on this bag is that it is one inch narrower than the V2 version, which makes for even easier storage. And I like that. But before I go any further and show you all the features of the bag, let me put the bag together for you. So this is the inside of the bag when you first get the bag. And let me show you what it comes with. First of all, it comes with this thank you, which on the inside has two luggage tags, which is a nice little extra. It has a shoulder strap, which is also a really nice extra. So if you want to carry it around on your shoulder and not roll it, you can. Or if there's snow on the ground and you want to carry it over the snow, you can. There's this really nice little TSA liquids bag can't go wrong with that. Now, to the thing that you most were curious about, how does this bag go together? And it goes together quite simply. You take these three Velcro areas and inside you'll see there are three more Velcro areas and you just attach them to those Velcro areas on both sides of the bag. And then you zip up the sides on one side, zip up the side on the other side, and the bag is put together. Now, let's go over the features of this bag. This bag comes with two compression straps to keep things in place or to push them down a little bit. Now, because this bag has a little more structure on the outside, it doesn't have any issues of it maybe bulging. It has four internal compartments with zippers. So you have this big internal compartment here, that little bit, this big internal compartment here, and on the sides, you have this compartment here and this compartment here. Now let's take a look at the lid of the bag. Now this is the lid of the bag. It has a big compartment here. You can put a laptop or other things you want to pack. You have two places to keep pencils, a compartment that seals shut. So if you want to maybe put your phone in there and another elastic compartment over there. And that's the internal part of this bag. So now that I have the bag together, let me go over some of the pockets that you can see much more clearly now. This is one of the improvements that they made. I wanted a computer sleeve and they made a computer sleeve padded right here in the front, but they were clever. They made it so it was accessible both from the top and from the side. So depending on how you have this stuffed under your seat, you can always be, have access to your computer. Here's another little detail I thought of, the handles. Now, some people said that they had problems with the handles, the original handles sticking up, but now it's magnetic. So it always stays down. On the side here, you have two more pen pockets. This is where you would tie in the strap. And let's talk a little bit about the strap. The strap is really nice quality. It's padded. It has an embossing on the webbing, which is a really nice detail. Just clips in nice and easy to the side here, like this. And it's made of metal, not plastic, so it's not going to break. See that everything here is made of metal. So we're not talking about like a low quality bag. 
I mean, this is really put together like a high quality bag, which is really, really nice. And here's the strap on the bag. Couldn't ask for more, right? On the back, you have a zipper compartment for your travel documents, your passport, your personal items. And not only is this a pocket, it's also a trolley pass through. I mean, you could use this bag for packing out additional clothing or as a personal item bag. But for me, I'm using this bag as an easy way of getting around the airport, but your mileage may be different. And over here, you have another big water bottle that, you know, I'm going to use for my umbrella and maybe a water bottle. That all cinches up nice too. So that's a nice little detail. And when we're talking about attention to detail, I like the fact that they have these little pulls here. It just makes it so much easier to open and close the bag. The other thing that this bag kept was originally it had two little ball feet in front, but it has this sturdy bar. So now when you pack it out, it will not fall over. And it has a handle here that goes up and down. I'll show you the bag fully packed, weigh it, and I'll roll it for you too. So now let's pack that bag. So let me tell you a little bit about this pack. I used the three by three method or the Stuco method. And I always throw in a couple of extra things. So I don't feel like I'm depriving myself, but it has to fit into one compression cube. So this is my trip to compression cube and it's a really great compression cube. And we'll get into it that in a minute, but let's go over the pack. As a matter of fact, this is one of the things I like about the trip to cube. Just pull it open. So you get three layering pieces. So I have one cardigan, one sweater, two sweaters. This is a lighter sweater. This is a heavier sweater. And that's because this is transitional. And like I just told you, I threw in an extra one, another lighter sweater, because it is transitional. We're in the fall. I have one, two long sleeve shirts. Now, technically I should only have three, but I have one, two, Short sleeve shirts, which makes for four shirts. So I'm over by one shirt. So I'm over by one sweater, over by one shirt. And then I threw in a nice fancy top here, just in case I go out to dinner and I want to wear something nice. And this is why I like this method, because it's an amazing method when you have a shortage of space. It kind of brings you in a little bit. Even though I'm packing everything into one bag, I managed to get three extra garments into this bag, and I'm still going to have everything to mix and match that's more than enough outfits. Actually, I think it turns out to be like 21 outfits and I'm only going away for seven days, but you got a lot of choice that way. And this is the basic part of the pack other than the bottoms. Now the bottoms are pretty straightforward. And I forgot one other thing. This trip cube has an area for your dirty laundry in the back. Now you'll notice that right now, that's where my pajamas reside, but as my stuff gets dirty, if it gets dirty, I can slip it back here and keep my bag clean. So that's why when you do one bag traveling, like I'm doing with this bag, this packing cube is amazing because it'll help keep your bag clean and organized. So that's this packing cube. In this packing cube are seven pairs of underwear, one bra and five pairs of socks. You might be saying only five, but two of the pairs of socks are made out of bamboo, which are antimicrobial. So that's all I need. Over here, I have a pair of leggings, a pair of black jeans, and a blue squirt. And everything here goes with everything in this bag. So now let's pack the bag. Now, for those of you who may be unfamiliar with my channel, I have a little packing trick for whenever I'm using a bag that has telescoping arms. And that is I pack behind the fabric here, right here. So I unzipper it and I put certain items behind here because you've got these bars here that are taking up space. I don't like things that are taking up space. Now I know you can lay it on top, but I find that it gets lumpy with many bags and the fabric won't give as much as you like. So I found that this is a much easier way of dealing with it. So in the bottom, I am going to stick my shoes flat. So I have a pair of shoes, my tech bag in the middle, my hair straightener, and my brush. And then I zip up the bottom of the bag. Like so. Now, 
Everything else will sit on, on top of this. And I'm going to show you, here's the bars here and here, and nothing is protruding beyond the bars. So that's a really good way of saving space when you're trying to do your best on packing in a minimal amount of space. Now let's get on to the rest of the pack. I'm going to put my, all my clothing over here on one side of the bag, my three pants here, over here. I'm going to put the rest of the pack in between like this. So I'm going to hold up the bag so you can see how I did that. And finally, I'm going to put my bag of toiletries right here on the top so that I have easy access to them. I have a few other items. So to finish this side of the bag, I'm going to put my extra pair of readers because you don't have enough readers. Okay. I'm going to put my sunglasses on this side. My crossbody bag slash wristlet. And then I just have to batten down the hatches. Now that's everything on this side of the bag. And that's going nowhere. Now let's do the other side of the bag. On this side of the bag, in the lid, I am putting my abbreviated version of my front seat comfort bag, which has everything I need for the flight. And I'm going to put that in here. Now you could use this for a tablet, but I'm not going to. I am going to put my phone up here. I have easy access to it. Now there are pen holders outside the bag and pen holders on the inside of the bag. Put one in one and one in the other. I put my battery bank here. And now we close up the bag. Now that was easy. Now all that's left for me to do is put my computer in the computer sleeve, which it did not have before. And now it does that. And put my umbrella into the water pocket, which for the record still has plenty of room for a water bottle if you really want one. And you could use this for other things too. I just happen to always stick my umbrella in there. You just never know when you're arriving and you need an umbrella. And now the bag is packed. Let's see how it works with the arms and the rolling. Okay, so the moment you've all been waiting for, how this bag operates. First, handle. Here's me using it with the strap. Now let's do the arm. Arm goes up nice and easy, has an extra position, and it goes down, and it goes up. And now let's talk about going over carpet and transitions. Because you know at the airport there's carpet and floor, so here it is, going over carpet. It's a breeze to roll. And here it is going from carpet to floor. I am not struggling at all. And this goes back down. And I'm ready to go on a trip. So let's talk quickly about airline compliance. Now, why would you maybe choose one bag over the other? Well, for one thing, the backpack comes in a very tender 1.9 pounds. So it hardly has any weight at all. While the rolling version of the bag starts off at six and a half pounds. Now granted, that is one pound less than most of the polycarbonate carry-ons that you can get, but it is still six and a half pounds. And if you're traveling on a European carrier that only allows seven kilograms, this bag could be a problem. You might have to weed out some pieces in order to use this bag. That won't happen with the backpack. Now, I weighed the bag and the bag came in as 22 pounds. That's not a lot, but it definitely is over the seven kilograms. So that's something to consider if you're trying to pick between the Undersea Pro backpack or the Undersea Pro roller. But if you're traveling with one of the budget airlines or one of our national carriers, they don't tend to weigh the bags. You might want to check it on the website, but they generally don't. And so that is not an issue. Now, let's make sure we check the, the sizes. So the measurements on the bag comes in as on the depth, eight, on the height, 13 and a half. Let's try the back, 13 and three quarters. That's still fine. And the width is 16. So you'll have no problem with the sizes at the airport. This bag will slip right in and you can even do that. Oh, 
And one last thing, if you want security and you don't want to keep it under your front seat because this is the only bag you're carrying and they allow room or you have some extra room, there is a security lock right here and you can lock this. Literally, they thought of everything. Now, as I promised, I'm going to tell you how you can either win the V3 version of the roller or the V3 version of the backpack. Now, this is what you have to do. You have to go back to the backpack video, which you'll find a link to right over here and tell me the number of pockets there were at the bottom of the bag. It's in that video. Then you come back to this video and you put in that number. And if you haven't already done so, you have to subscribe and like the video. And also please leave me any comments about how you feel about these bags and then you'll be entered into the contest. The rest of the rules you'll find in the description down below, along with the date that I'll be announcing the winner of both the backpack and the roller bag. Now that's exciting news. And you want to know what else is exciting? These packing cubes. Bye. Love ya.